O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and the great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lord, Thou hast searched me out and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thoughts long before. Thou art about my path and about my bed, inspirest out all my ways, for lo, there is not a word in my tongue. But thou, O Lord, knowest it altogether, thou hast fashioned me behind and before, and laid thy hand upon me, such knowledge is too wonderful and excellent for me, I cannot attain unto it, whither shall I go then from thy spirit? Or whither shall I go then from thy presence? If I climb up into heaven, thou art there. If I go down to hell, thou art there also. If I take the wings of the morning and remain in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there also shall thy hand lead me. And thy right hand shall hold me. If I say peradventure, the darkness shall cover me. Then shall my night be turned to day, yea, the darkness is no darkness with thee, but the night is as clear as the day. The darkness and light to thee are both alike, for my reins are thine. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb, I will give thanks unto thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvellous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My bones are not hid from thee. Though I be made secretly and fashioned beneath the earth, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book were all my members written, which day by day were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How dear are thy counsels unto me, O God! O oh, how great is the sum of them! If I tell them, they are more in number than the sand. When I wake up, I am present with thee. Wilt thou not slay the wicked, O God? Depart from me, ye bloodthirsty men, for they speak unrighteously against thee. And thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee. Yea, I hate them right sore. Even as though they were mine enemies. Try me, O God, and seek the ground of my heart. Prove me and examine my thoughts. Look well if there be any way of wickedness in me, 
and lead me in the way everlasting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man, and preserve me from the wicked man, who imagine mischief in their hearts and stir up strife all the day long. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the ungodly. Preserve me from the wicked men who are purposed to overthrow my goings. The proud have laid a snare for me and spread a net abroad with cords. Yea, and set traps in my way. I said unto the Lord, Thou art my God. Hear the voice of my prayers, O Lord. O Lord God, Thou strength of my health. Thou hast covered my head in the day of battle. Let not the ungodly have his desire, O Lord. Let not his mischievous imagination prosper, lest they be too proud. Let the mischief of their own lips fall upon the head of them. That compass me about, let hot burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire and into the pit, that they never rise up again. A man full of words shall not prosper upon the earth. Evil shall hunt the wicked person to overthrow him. Sure I am that the Lord will avenge the poor and maintain the cause of the helpless. The righteous also shall give thanks unto thy name and the just shall continue in thy sight. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. Lord, I call upon thee, haste thee unto me. And consider my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth in thy sight as the incense. And let the lifting up of my hands be an evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. And keep the door of my lips. O let not mine heart be inclined to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in ungodly works with the men that work wickedness, lest I eat of such things as please them. Let the righteous rather smite me friendly and reprove me, but let not their precious balms break my head. Yea, I will pray yet against their wickedness. Let their judges be overthrown in stony places that they may hear my words, for they are sweet. Our bones lie scattered before the pit, like as when one breaketh and heweth wood upon the earth. But mine eyes look unto thee, O Lord God. In thee is my trust, O cast not out my soul. Keep me from the snare that they have laid for me and from the traps of the wicked doers. Let the ungodly fall into their own nets together, and let me ever escape them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. He beginneth the twentieth chapter of the second book of Kings. In those days Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die, you shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I beg you, how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart, and have done what is good in your sight. 
and Hezekiah wept bitterly, and before Isaiah had gone out of the middle court, the word of the Lord came to him, Turn back, and say to Hezekiah, the prince of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, behold, I will heal you. On the third day you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add fifteen years to your life. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake, and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, Bring a cake of figs, and let them take and lay it on the boil, that he may recover. And Hezekiah said to Isaiah, What shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me, and that I shall go up to the house of the Lord on the third day? And Isaiah said, This is the sign to you from the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he has promised. Shall the shadow go forward ten steps, or go back ten steps? And Hezekiah answered, It is an easy thing for the shadow to lengthen ten steps, rather let the shadow go back ten steps. And Isaiah the prophet cried to the Lord, and he brought the shadow back ten steps, by which the sun had declined on the dial of Ahaz. At that time Merodach Balan, the son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent envoys with letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he heard that Hezekiah had been sick, and Hezekiah welcomed them, and he showed them all his treasure house, the silver and gold, the spices, the precious oil, his armoury, all that was found in his storehouses. There was nothing in his house or in all his realm that Hezekiah did not show them, then Isaiah the prophet came to King Hezekiah and said to him, What did these men say, and from where did they come to you? And Hezekiah said, They have come from a far country, from Babylon. He said, What have they seen in your house? And Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing in my storehouses that I did not show them. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, when all that is in your house, and that which your fathers have stored up till this day, shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. And some of your own sons, who are born to you, shall be taken away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. Then said Hezekiah to Isaiah, the word of the Lord which you have spoken is good. For he thought, why not, if there will be peace and security in my days? The rest of the deeds of Hezekiah, and all his might, and how he made the pool, and the conduit, and brought water into the city, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and Manasseh his son reigned in his stead. Here endeth the first lesson. We praise thee, O God, we acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee, the goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee, the noble army of martyrs praise thee, the holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. 
when thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up for ever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted, let me never be confounded. Here beginneth the second verse of the eleventh chapter of the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I commend you because you remember me in everything, and maintain the traditions even as I have delivered them to you. But I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of a woman is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. Any man who prays or prophesies with his head covered dishonours his head, but any woman who prays or prophesies with her head unveiled dishonours her head. It is the same as if her head were shaven. For if a woman will not veil herself, then she should cut off her hair. But if it is disgraceful for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her wear a veil. For a man ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and glory of God. But woman is the glory of man. For man was not made from woman, but woman from man. Neither was man created for woman, but woman for man. That is why a woman ought to have a veil on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, in the Lord, woman is not independent of man, nor man of woman. For as woman was made from man, so man is now born of woman, and all things are from God. Judge for yourselves. Is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head uncovered? Does not nature itself teach you that for a man to wear long hair is degrading to him. But if a woman has long hair, it is her pride, for her hair is given to her for a covering. If any one is disposed to be contentious, we recognise no other practice, nor do the churches of God. But in the following instructions I do not commend you, because when you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For in the first place, when you assemble as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And I partly believe it. For there must be factions among you, in order that those who are genuine among you may be recognised. When you meet together, it is not the Lord's Supper that you eat. For in eating, each one goes ahead with his own meal, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you in this? No, I will not. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it, and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, this chalice is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread 
and drink the chalice, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself, and so eat of the bread and drink the cup. For any one who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment upon himself. That is why many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we should not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are chastened so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together to be condemned. About the other things I will give directions when I come. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. O Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come unto thee. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the King, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord because there is none other that fighteth for us but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Almighty God, who willest to be glorified in thy saints, and didst raise up thy servants, Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, to shine as lights in the world, shine, we pray thee, in our hearts, that aided by their prayers, we also in our generation may show forth thy praises, who has called us out of darkness into thy marvellous light. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. 
Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same by thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, the pastor and ruler of all the faithful, mercifully look upon thy servant Francis, whom thou hast chosen to be shepherd and pope of thy church. Grant unto him to be in word and conduct a wholesome example to the people committed to his charge, that he, with them, may attain at last to the crown of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal God, who has set ministers and pastors in thy church, by whom thou wouldest plant holiness in the world and reign in the hearts of men. Pour upon thy servant David, our ordinary, and the clergy committed to his charge, the flame of thy Holy Spirit. They may lift up the everlasting light of the gospel and feed with the living bread the flock of thy dear Son, by whom alone mankind shall be healed and glorify thy name, now and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who dost govern all things in heaven and earth, mercifully hear our prayers and grant to this ordinariat all things needful for its spiritual welfare, priests and deacons to labour in this portion of the vineyard, holy, learned and zealous religious, churches complete in the beauty of holiness, strengthen and confirm the faithful, protect and guide the children, visit and relieve the sick, turn and soften the wicked, arouse the careless, recover the fallen, restore the penitent, remove all hindrance to the advancement of thy truth, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within the fold of thy holy church, to the honour and glory of thy blessed name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfil now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all, evermore. Amen. <laughs>